woman insurance and you're about to pay a deductible. And just like that, my granddad was trapped in a nigga moment. At this point, he can A, walk away and let insurance handle the damage to the car, or B, fight with a dumb, crazy, blind nigga. Let's see which one he chooses. <laughs> That's right. I'm back to New York car, nigga. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Oh, hell no. Granddad, let's whoop this nigga's ass right now. Bitch-ass, braggart-ass, punk-ass, pussy-ass, bitch-ass, nigga. You want to do something, bitch-ass, nigga? Hold up. I smell new shoes. Oh, me. Oh, Ooh, what you made? I've said it before. Expensive sneakers are like $150 landmines. Step on one and boom! A perfectly rational black man can explode. Yeah! yeah. They ain't doing him all, are they? Never! Hey, everybody. So I was watching the Boondocks yesterday, and this episode, one that I had never seen before. Of course, the Boondocks is wildly famous, but, you know, although I was busy in 2004 when the Boondocks was really at the peak of its uh, popularity and I wasn't uh I wasn't the biggest fan of the Boondocks. I had nothing against it. I certainly knew about it, but I was watching other shows. I I I was watching The Office. I was more engrossed in in The Office than any other show at that time. Well, anyway, um this episode of the boondocks has really spoken to me all right here we have nothing but pure truth coming from the boondocks now of course what i know about the boondocks is that they're very honest and they they really encapsulate um a lot of the black experience you know thanks to aaron mcruder the show's creator and i have to really say that they really hit the nail on the head with this one because I had a very similar experience that just mirrors exactly what they're talking about. So I'll give you more details to explain uh, what I mean. So let's begin here. It says six of 10 nigga moments involve a sneaker. 50% of those sneakers are Nikes. Boom. That's what my story is about. That's that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. A nigga moment, my sneakers, and they were Nike sneakers. All right. Let's see what they say about it. Ass whooping insurance and you're about to pay a deductible. And just like that, my granddad was trapped in a nigga moment. At this point, he can A, walk away and let insurance handle the damage to the car or B, fight with a dumb, crazy, blind nigga. Let's see which one he chooses. All right, good people. So in my case, I had the choices of A, walk away and just enter my home. Or B, um, fight with a goat. Yes, you heard me correctly. A goat. Those were my choices. Um walk away that's the first choice choice a walk away and enter my home and forget about the incident or b fight with a goat <laughs> that's right i'm back to new york car nigga. what you gonna do what you gonna do this refrain of what you gonna do what you gonna do is just you know, quintessential nigga moment speech. It's like in that moment, really, what are you going to do? And this is the question I felt I was being asked by a goat. Okay, let me explain. There's there's more to the story, but yes, you heard me correctly. A goat. Oh, hell no. Granddad, let's whoop this nigga's ass right now. Bitch-ass, braggart-ass, punk-ass, pussy-ass, bitch-ass, nigga! You wanna do something, bitch-ass, nigga! 
fold up. I smell new shoes. Oh, me. Wow. I smell new shoes. Oh, Ooh, what you mean? I've said it before. Expensive sneakers are like $150 landmines. Step on one and boom! A perfectly rational black man can explode. Yeah, yeah, they know anymore, are they? Never. Okay, now the uh, the goat. Um, perhaps the goat smelled new shoes. Perhaps um, no. Let's let's be honest. Let's be very clear. Um, the goat was uh, oblivious to what was happening. Oblivious to the fact that I was wearing some new Nike sneakers, and. However, the goat still acted as if the goat was fully aware of my new sneakers because that goat stood on my new sneaker, stepped on my new sneaker. And in that moment, or rather the goat's actions led me to have a nigga moment because just as in this scene, as you will see, the shoe is stepped on, creating the nigga moment. All right. So hopefully I've sufficiently established uh, what the nigga moment is, or rather with the help of uh, Aaron McGruder's uh, The Boondocks, I've established what the nigga moment is. Oh, it, it's real. It is real. Now, cut to me in Oman. For those of you unfamiliar, Oman is in the Middle East, thousands of miles away from well, what you would, what anyone would regularly expect to find, right? Thousands of miles away from any, you know, I'm from LA, so I would say LA niggas. And this whole culture of, you know, sneakers, um, you know, sneaker culture, sneakers being important, you know, all of that, that was all back in LA, or so I thought. You know, you can take the boy out of the hood. You can't take the hood out of the boy. Let's let's go with something like that, with a statement like that. So there I am, thousands of miles away in the city of Oman. And to give you some uh, visuals, here we are. Here I am, or rather here, there I was standing atop my uh, roof uh, of my home in the desert of Nizwa. All right, let's let's for the scenery's sake, let's let's uh, let's check it out. All right, the sun was out. This was uh, in the afternoon, and uh, let's say it was dry weather. It was uh, dry and hot in Nizwa. It's a desert. Okay, again, I'm atop my home. Notice the the amount of space, the the empty lots between these homes. All right. What you're looking at is um, these are homes in in Nizwa in the desert. In the in the background, in the distance, there's a local uh, a local store. All right. Here's another home. All right. Notice that green door there. I took a photo of the goat in question <laughs> uh, in front of that green door. Just notice it. It's not it's not particularly uh special it's just a place marker all right so this is the neighborhood i lived in give you some idea desolate desert hot etc boom this is the goat in question this goat here is is the primary suspect all right now let me tell you because i lived in the desert because i was thousands of miles away from home in los angeles the sight of seeing goats in my neighborhood in my community was um intriguing it was like hey wow that's kind of cool that's interesting you don't see that in los angeles uh every day and so i decided wow i'm going to take a photo and i'm going to post that photo to instagram to ig uh, maybe my friends and family back at home, not only will they see my surroundings, but they might even they might even get a kick out of seeing that, you know, I live, you know, with goats, you know, in my neighborhood. So I decided to snap that photo. I snapped the photo. Here's another photo of the goat in front of that green 
uh, door I mentioned as a place marker just to give you some idea where I was. All right. There's the uh, goat and one of its friends. OK, there's that uh, green door again. All right. Now, back to what a nigga moment is. All right. Thanks to the boondocks, it says six to ten nigga moments involve a sneaker. All right. So my nigga moment involved my sneakers and that goat. What happened? Well, as I was taking that photo or taking photos of the local goats, of the neighborhood goats, that one particular goat decided to approach me, which it did. It approached me. And just as it was standing near me, the goat, the hoof of that goat landed on my, you guessed it, new Nike sneakers. All right. And when that goat did that, I was like, yo, I can't believe this. This nigga goat (laughs) had the nerve to stand on my new Nike sneakers. I mean, this was, I mean, I, I, what in the world, you know, it was such a moment for me. Like, man, I, I just assumed the goat would approach me and maybe stop. But no, this goat approached me and then literally its hoof landed on my, my, my foot. Now, I imagined, I imagined that this goat was communicating to me. Oh, this is completely imagined, right? I was saying, wow, look at this. First, I I've, I was, you know, uh, I was taken aback. I was offended. I was like, how could you, how could you do this, goat? Of course, the goat, you know, doesn't speak or doesn't, you know, understand me. But this is just how I felt. Of course, I'm not going to stand in the desert and talk to the goat. But I felt, I imagined that the goat was actually talking to me. As if this goat were saying, you know, what what you doing in my neighborhood and what you going to do? I just stepped on your shoe, okay? What you going to do? What you going to do? So this was just a very rude, um, you know, uh, goat. So I, um, yeah, I was upset. My new sneakers, you know, had been scuffed. This goat had done this to me, and there I was, thousands of miles from from home in Los Angeles. And this was the only way for me to interpret what had happened. I thought, man, can you imagine? I'm thousands of miles away from any sneaker culture, and yet I'm still hurt when this animal, this animal, you know, steps on my shoe. I think that, I think that even though it's it was an animal and uh it it didn't matter the fact that you know those shoes were mine and you know i you know regardless of the fact that it was an animal just you know caring for one's things um takes priority no matter where you are in the world so um yes having my foot stepped on um was of some concern to me but um after that happened you know, I just dusted the um, dusted my shoe off, and it was it was you know back to normal. But I had this story of this encounter with this uh, with this goat, and again, I took a, a photo of my shoe. I posted that photo to Instagram, and I shared it with friends and family. Here's what I wrote. So I bought a fresh pair of kicks over the weekend. Today, as I was returning to my home, I noticed a bunch of goats roaming around my hood. The photographer in me sensed it would be an interesting photo opportunity. So I approached the local goats to snap a few interesting shots. Okay, let's be, excuse me for a moment. Let me say this. Yes, um, I was standing near my home and yes, I did approach the goats, um, but... There was uh, there was one particular goat that left the pack and then, you know, proceeded to approach me. All right. So I, I took a few steps towards the goat, but then the that particular goat, you know, took notice of me and then approached, walked the rest of the way toward me. 
Okay, with that said, I'll continue. This one particular goat approached me in a friendly manner as if to greet me with a, what's up, player? What you doing in these parts? All right, so I, I wrote it as he was a friendly goat. Um, the goat continues, do you know that, oh, and then I continue, do you know this ignorant mofo had the nerve to stop and step right on my new kick? I felt like bugging out from do the right thing. All right, there's another uh, movie reference that's important and appropriate, you know, for the retelling of this story from do the right thing, bugging out, you know, the character bugging out had his um, shoe scuffed there. That was a, 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 a quintessential nigga moment in the movie. Do the right thing. All right. Now, how did I feel in that moment? Basically, when that goat stood on my shoe, I, I I definitely felt like the goat was saying to me, what you going to do, you know, taunting me. But then it was also that goat was saying to me, you know, just like Dave Chappelle. And I wrote this here. It says this goat looked up at me as if to say in Dave Chappelle's voice, you know, um, F yo, yo, kicks, nigga. F yo, kicks, nigga. <laughs> That's what it felt like. All over a goat. That's what the goat said to me. F your kicks, nigga. F your kicks. All right. That's my story.